Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to do an example just to make sure we have a good coverage on how we handle two-dimensional collisions. Here we're going to have two objects of different masses moving at different velocities, different initial velocities and at different angles and they're going to unfortunately meet, collide and of course what we need to do then is find the final velocity of the two objects and the angle relative to the horizontal with their final velocity moving away from the collision assuming of course that they stick Together. So here we have a case where we come in from different angles, a different velocity, with different masses, collide, and then where will the two objects, after they stick together, move towards, in what direction, and with what final velocity. Again, we have two unknowns, V final and the final angle at which they will be moving in relative to the horizontal. That means we're going to need two equations to figure that out, which means we need to do the conservation momentum in both the x and the y direction. So we have to have two equations. So what we can say here is that momentum initial in the x direction equals momentum initial in the y direction. Oh, 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 no, 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 that's wrong. Momentum final in the x direction. Of course, we can't set those two equal to each other. So the initial, the initial momentum in the x direction should equal the final momentum in the x direction. And the initial momentum in the y direction should equal the final momentum in the y direction. All right, before we actually write in the equations, we need to figure out the x and y components of each of these velocities. So starting with m1, we know here that we have uh, v1 initial in the x direction, which is v1 initial um, times the, of course that would be the adjacent side, times the cosine of the angle theta 1, which is a 30 degree angle. And to find the y component here, let's draw the y component. We can say that V1 initial in the y direction equals V1 initial times the sine of the angle theta sub 1 because this is really the opposite to the angle if we draw the triangle right here. So now we have the x and y components of the initial velocity for mass 1. Using a different color so that we don't get too confused here, we'll do the same for M2. So here we have the initial velocity uh, for, uh, that's V2 initial of, v2, of mass 2 in the x direction and so it's equal to v2 initial times the cosine of the angle so here's the angle theta 2 there's the adjacent side so we use the cosine and then if we want to find the y component here we can say v2 initial in the y direction equals v2 initial times the sine of theta 2 notice that when I move this component over here we have ourselves a triangle and it would be the opposite side to the angle so therefore we use sine so now we have the x and y components of the initial velocity of each of the two objects we can now go ahead and write in the equation right here so we have m1 times v1 initial in the x direction plus m2 v2 initial in the x direction so that's the initial momentum of both objects in the x direction only equals since they stick together I can go m1 plus m2 times v2 final in the x direction so there's only one oop I shouldn't even say v2 so let's say v final because they stick together so they have the common final velocities and we only want the component in the x direction. Doing the same for the y direction we could say m1 times v1 initial in the y direction plus m2 v2 initial in the y direction. So these are the two momentums of the two objects initially in the y direction before the collision. Now notice we don't worry about the signs yet. The signs will come later when we plug in the numbers here. So this is equal to m1 plus m2 times v final in the y direction. Oop, that just looks like a terrible y here. Let me try that again. There we go. So again, notice this equation will give us the final velocity in the x direction. This equation will give us the final velocity in the y direction. So those are the two components of the final velocity. And just to show what we're looking for here. So this here would be v final in the x direction. This one here would be v final in the y direction. So we'll find these two components by solving these two equations. From that we can find v final and from those two components we can find the angle. All right, so let's plug in what we have here. So we have uh, m1, which is uh, two kilograms, and I'll leave off the units, times v1 initial in the x direction. So that v1 is six meters per second and I have to multiply that times the cosine of the angle which is 30 degrees so the cosine of 30 degrees 
So that's the momentum in the x direction of the first mass plus the mass of the second, which is four kilograms times its initial velocity, which is five meters per second, times the cosine of the angle, the cosine of 45 degrees. So that's the total momentum before the collision in the x direction. That should equal m1 plus m2, and I know what those are, so I might as well put those in. So that would be uh, 2 plus 4, 2 kilograms plus 4 kilograms, times v final in the x direction. And I'll just say v final in the x direction. And that's what we're looking for right here. So now we can simply solve for that. So if um, this would be 12 times the cosine of 30 degrees is 0 0.866 plus 20. The cosine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707. And if we divide that by this, which is 6, because we 2 plus 4 is 6, divide that by 6, that equals v final in the x direction. Now we need a, a calculator to figure out what that is equal to. So we have 12 times 0 0.866 plus 20 times 0.707 and divide that by 6, and what do we get? Uh, we get 4.09. So V final in the X direction equals 4.09 meters per second. All right, now let's find V final in the Y direction. Okay. So we have M1, which is 2 kilograms, V1 initial in the Y direction. V1 initial in the Y direction is right here. But notice that it's going to be a minus velocity because it's pointing downward. So it would be uh, minus 6 times, and of course we have to multiply times the sine of the angle, sine of 30 degrees. So sine of 30 de degrees. There we go. Plus the second mass, the second mass is 4 kilograms. Its initial velocity in the y direction is positive. You can see that. So it would be plus 5 times the sine of 45 degrees. So this now is the initial momentum of the two masses added together in the y direction. Notice this will give you a negative quantity because it's moving downward. This will give you a positive quantity because it's moving upward. Now the two masses together is 2 plus 4 times v final in the y direction. Okay, so to find v final in the y direction, let's simplify this a little bit. So we have a minus 12 times the sine of 30 is 1 half plus 20 the sine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707 and then divide the whole thing by the coefficient here which is 6 and that will give you v final in the y direction so v final in the y direction equals so we have 20 times 0 0.707 minus uh, 6 and we divide that by 6 and so we have 1.36 1.36 meters per second notice that it's positive which means that the y, the, the y component of the final velocity is still in the positive direction. So what I drew here was relatively correct. I was kind of assuming that the, the final velocity would be in a slightly upward direction rather than a downward direction. And that shows right here when we calculate the y component. All right, so now we have the x and y component of the final velocity. How do we find the final velocity? Using Pythagorean theorem, we know that the hypotenuse, v final, is simply equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of these sides, which would be v final in the x direction squared plus v final in the y direction squared. So this is equal to the square root of, that would be 4.09 squared plus 1.36 squared. Notice again, I leave off the units, so it's a little cleaner. It doesn't take up as much board space. So we have uh, this component squared uh, plus 4.09 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 4.31, 4.31 meters per second. All right, so now we have the final velocity of the two objects after they collide. Now we still need to find the angle relative to the horizontal, which is theta. Theta can be found by taking the arc tangent of the opposite side of the angle divided by the adjacent side. Of course, that's equal to the arc tangent. The opposite side would be the v final in the y direction divided by the adjacent side v final in the x direction. It's simply the y and x component of the final velocity. So this is equal to the arc tangent of the y velocity component was 1.36 and the x was 4.09. So if we take the attention of that, we should get the angle. 
So 1.36 divided by 4.09, that ratio, take the arctangent, and we get 18.4 degrees. So theta equals 18.4 degrees. And that's the direction, at least the angle relative to the horizontal. Find the velocity and the angle relative to the horizontal of the two objects sticking together after the collision. And that's how we do that.